All right, folks, welcome back to the shop. We got Pikes Peak car on the lift here because we were just out testing a High Plains Raceway a couple days ago, and we had an, we had a good day of testing, but we had an interesting issue, uh, which actually resulted in Nigel, who was testing the car for us, going off track because the brakes failed, uh, and then they were really inconsistent for the rest of the day. Now that we've got the car back on the lift, we give them a look over, and it turns out that it's not it's not as much to do with the brakes as you might think. So the question is, like if you've gone out to the track with NASA or the SCC or whatnot, on top of almost all these tracks lists for safety checks are wheel bearings. Why is that? Well, because wheel bearing issues in and of themselves can be a problem, but they can actually lead to other issues, the things you might not think about, like brakes. And that was our case. So now that we've got the car up in the air here, we've checked our wheel bearings, like and you can push on these wheels, and it turns out both front wheel bearings are bad. Now, on this side, we actually ended up reusing one of the axle nuts. You can see that we staked it twice. On the other side, we did the same thing. And before we went to the track, we noticed that it was loose. So we put a new axle nut on and we forgot to stake it. With the stake missing on the axle nut, there's nothing to lock it in place. And so the rotation of the wheel can cause that sucker to loosen up. And that's what happened on the other side. So it's a pretty bad failure on the other side. But then how does that translate to a brake failure or in inconsistent brake behavior? Well, let's, let's get some parts on the counter. Let's head up front. Let's talk about it. So now that we're up front, I've got all the, the key pieces of the puzzle here on the counter. We've got our hub and wheel bearing assembly. This is for our um, WRX STI. So this is basically a hub and bearing that are all part of this assembly, right? You've got four bolts and this actually bolts to the knuckle. The axle goes through the center here and then the axle nut, you would see it right here in this recess. The rotor then slides onto the hub as so. And then the wheel squishes in to make a sandwich with the rotor and the wheel bearing. So how is it that a wheel bearing issue could potentially cause a brake issue? Well, it's because if you have an issue with this wheel bearing, the wheel bearing is going to start to wobble if this bearing fails and it's not holding the hub firmly in place. On Subarus, because they're all wheel drive, you have the axle nut and the axle is squeezing the bearing. One of the things that we've seen is it turns out you can actually have a pretty bad wheel bearing failure and you're not going to see the symptoms nearly as much as if, say, you had like a rear wheel drive car. Like on a BRZ, the, you don't have the axle and the axle nut that comes through to, to like trap the hub and the bearing as much. It's a different assembly. Um, but this is, this is kind of like the early motivation uh, for, for checking these wheel bearings because in the case of a rear wheel drive car, you know, the front axles with no axles to like trap uh, the hub and bearing. And, Worst case scenario, if you have a catastrophic bearing failure to the point where there's nothing really holding the hub into the knuckle, this is where you see sometimes at the track people's wheels fall off. That's what it can lead to. Much harder to do on an all-wheel drive Subaru because you've got the axle and the axle nut locking everything in place. But again, what we've seen like on the rally car, for instance, is you can have a wheel bearing that is totally shot, but just showing minimal signs of play because that axle and the axle nut and all of the squeezing force um, that that applies to the bearing kind of masks or hides the degree to which the bearing has failed. But even with that being said, with all-wheel drive cars still, once the bearing starts to fail and it's not holding the hub in place firmly or properly because it's starting to wear, it's going to start to wobble. And remember, the rotor is sandwiched onto the hub, so if the hub is wobbling, the rotor is going to wobble too. And because the wheel is on there, well, the wheel is going to wobble, so you can have some inconsistent uh, suspension feel, but here's where brakes get involved. Okay, imagine my hand is a caliper with, with brake pads. The, the pads sit right on the rotor. So when everything is held in place, like if you're just driving down the road with no pressure, the pads are just ever so slightly touching the rotor, but they're right ready to squeeze it as soon as you start to apply brake pressure. But if the bearing has failed and the hub is wobbling, which means that the rotor is wobbling, what can happen is, is that rotor wobble can actually push the pads back into the caliper. This is called pad knockback. And it can actually be bad enough to the point where the next time you go to press the brake pedal, well, there's not, they're not sitting there and not ready, ready to apply pressure to the rotor. You actually have to push the pedal down to get them to the point where they're now right at the rotor again. And then the second time you press the brakes, then it feels like the brakes are working. Or, or stopping normally. In the case of our car with Nigel driving, he went down and 
hit the brakes at the end of the back straight, pedal just went to the floor, and he had a bit of an off. Part of the motivation for making this video was that experience, but another part is we actually talked to a customer maybe two weeks ago that had the exact same problem, a phantom brake issue that seemed to come out of nowhere where he is just going down the back straight, hits the brakes, pedals goes to the floor with no stopping power, and, and off, off you go. It's a scary, scary situation. It's kind of the worst case scenario uh, when you're driving at the track. And that's why m most of these organizations like NASA, the SCCA, make such a big deal about checking your wheel bearings because yeah, there's other issues that can come from having a bad wheel bearing. You definitely don't want that. But from a safety standpoint, you can have this, this kind of inconsistent brake feel. And this is what we were chasing for the whole rest of the day. Sometimes it feels like the pedal is okay. And then sometimes the pedal was just to the floor. And the very common symptom when it's wheel bearing related is that basically the first time you push, push the brake pedal, it's very soft. Then you double pump it and you come back. And then now the pedal gets firm. And now you have close to normal stopping or normal stopping. And then it's very inconsistent. Sometimes you push the pedal once and you've got railer stopping. Sometimes you have to pump it up. Where this comes from is again, the rotor wobbling and pushing the pads and spreading the caliper back. This is like, uh, you know, if you're changing your brake pads where you have to like use a screwdriver or whatever to push the pistons back into the caliper. And then when you get back in the car, you have to pump the pedal up to get them to the point where the pads are sitting right on the rotor. Effectively, that's what, ha what is happening to a small degree when the bearing is failing and, and the rotors are wobbling and you're getting this pad knockback. Or the other thing you got to keep in mind is you got to check all four corners. It's not just the fronts. Um, it, it could be any of, the, all, any of the four wheels that have this issue can push the pads back and basically take it so that the, the brake system, the first time you start moving the fluid, it's going to absorb into whichever caliper has moved back and has that all this extra movement. And then the system will then start to actually normally apply brakes the second time you pump it. So you've got to check all four wheel bearings. Yes, usually the fronts are the most common, but you got to check them all uh, because any one of the wheel bearings, if they fail to this extent, can cause this kind of problem. So be sure to check the wheel bearings. It really is a big safety issue. This is why it's such a big deal for these racing organizations to prioritize this. So um, really is a big deal. And if you're having this you know, inconsistent pedal feel, and especially if you're having to double pump to get it to feel like the brakes are really working and grabbing, check the wheel brings. That could, that could be the, the core cause of the problem. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully this helps connect the dots between the, the wheel bearing and brakes and how one can help you diagnose the other. Thank you for your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned to Flatirons Tuning.